Hey guys, this is Rob. Have you ever wanted to electrically model load centers within multifamily apartment units, such as these studios, or if I had some one bedrooms and two bedrooms? In this video, I'm going to show you how I created a custom family for a load center connection, which includes all of the dwelling unit loads, like ranges and lights and receptacles and fans and heating and cooling and then apply those to a meter center which adds them up according to NEC rules for a number of apartment units. Let me show you how I did this. So what I have is a custom family and I already have that opened here and we've called it load center connection. Now this assumes you've made families or edited families before, so you're familiar with the family editor. But realize, even though this is a load center connection, it is not a electrical equipment. It is not a panel board. It is merely a load that we will connect to another distribution panel of some type. So it's not a panel board that receives connections from receptacles and ranges. This itself will have all of the loads built into it to give us a connected load for each apartment unit. Let me show you what I mean. So this is the 3D geometry of it. It is set up here as a recessed load center. You see the, you see the cover of the load center. Let me look at the top view. This view here is looking at the wall because this is a face-based type of family. So here's the extrusion that comes with the family editor. We have our trim and load center size here. Up here is the electrical connection, electrical connector. And that is where the uh, meat of this information is, is in that electrical connector. I could put in conduit connections here but we don't often model conduit connecting exactly, you know, right to this load center. We, we model conduit getting close. We don't worry about connectors, but you can add that easily. So this is a 3D geometry of it. Again, you can see just the face here, but there actually is um, a, a panel tub in there as well. Let's get into the bones of this thing and look at the actual electrical connector. As you can see over here, it is set up as a balanced power system. So remember, this is an electrical fixture, not an electrical equipment. So it has loads associated with it. So if we click on the connector itself, the electrical connector, it is a balanced power system set up for two poles. Lagging is fine. We have a load classification as a dwelling unit. We have it set up at 208 volt right now and the apparent load, I will show you how we got there. You can see these are grayed out, which means that they are controlled further upstream by the family type parameters. So to see those, we will go over to the family types, click that open and you will see in here, these have all been added to a standard electrical fixture we've added all of the loads that could be within a single dwelling unit. We've put in defaults, cooking 9KW, dishwasher 500, disposal, they can all be changed. These are all type parameters. So I'll show you how we use those in the model itself. Um, heating, cooling, kitchen, laundry, microwave, motors, mo uh, water heating. These are typically two pole, but that could be changed if for some reason you have something different. We can change it from 208 to 240, for example, if you just have a 240, 120 single phase service. And load classification is typically dwelling unit. We can take a look at this and look at the demand factor associated with dwelling unit. And this is where some of the magic happens. This is built into Revit in that it follows the NEC guidelines for derating loads based upon the quantity of residential units you have. So if we have one to two, it's a hundred percent. If you have three to five, 45%, it really starts diversifying there all the way down to 
62 or more units connected to a single bus, 23% demand factor. So this is all built in, and this is figured out per panel per bus, as you will see later. So that's what's going on with the loads. The final load is calculated right here, and it is simply 3 watts per square foot times the dwelling unit area plus the kitchen plus the cooking plus the heating. This whole formula just adds up all of these loads straight up as connected load. And that is what gets applied to any panel that we connect this to. And then we also have some dimensional information. The defaults are set up for a residential load center, which is only around, around 4 inches deep. Um, and the width is around 15 inches, fits between the studs, 16 inch studs. So that gives us approximate dimensions for the 3D geometry. So that is all type information. So we can set up a number of different types within our model for a studio, for a one bedroom, two bedroom, because they would have different loads. So let us jump into our sample electrical model we have been looking at. And here is second floor of a small multifamily. And you can see here we only have studio apartments on this level. It's a it, this project doesn't have many other types. So I'm just going to assume that these are some different style apartments so we can see how this works. But for example in this studio we uh, let's say we've looked at the architectural and, and, and studied what appliances will be in here. We've looked at mechanical. We know what mechanical appliances are going to be in here. Uh, we would typically do a call out of the studio to show the actual loads inside a typical studio rather than repeat it over and over. So that's how we show those loads. But those loads don't get circuited like a typical commercial project. The loads and circuiting for these dwelling units is done differently. So we include the loads, the connected loads of all these within this load center connection. So I've loaded that into my model and it's under electrical fixtures, load center connection. And I just drag one of those in and let's say they want to we want to put it on this wall here and set up as a recessed. Put it in there. Now this should have all the default information, but let's look at what's what is the instance parameters. Well, the we, we can put a different height, height, mounting height, and we can also change the dwelling unit area because the receptacles and lights are calculated based on the area, which can vary from studio to studio. Now, first of all, I want to name this load center as a separate type. So I'm going to edit and duplicate it and call this one, let's call it studio. We can, yeah, something like LC studio, so it has its own type name, and then I like to put a, a type mark just called, and this is mainly for architects and owners reading these, looking at these plans. I call it a panel even though it's a load center. I like to call it unit panel. So, and I already share that with another one, which is okay. If I was to tag by category with a leader, then this would show up as a unit panel. And that's easier for other people to understand even though it's a load center. So there's the unit panel. Now let's go back to the parameters. What's the square feet? Well we happen to have a shortcut here where we have a room tag with an area built into it so I can see that it's three, 312 square feet. So I will just manually put in 312 into that. So that's about all of the instance parameters. Now Let's go look at all of the type parameters. These are the defaults that came with the family when we brought it in. And usually these are fine for a typical unit. What usually changes 
by studio or one bedroom or two bedroom is things like the heating and cooling load. So let's say in this one we found out we only have 1500 watts of heating or cooling. And 100, 100 motors would be other like an exhaust fan, other fans like that. We are at 208, we are two pole. So we are all good here the rest of this. Sometimes, I think in this one, we do not have washer and dryer in this unit. So I can get, oh, I have those. Let me get rid of the laundry circuit. Zero that out. And get rid of the dryer. Zero that out. Some of these might have a smaller ranges, just like cooktops, things like that. You can change that up here. Okay. So what this does is it shows me that I have over here on the right, this is connected load of 17 kW. Now this connected load will be reflected into the meter center that I connect this studio up to. So that's a studio. Now let us, just for example, let us say that this one is a one bedroom just to get the idea across one bedroom so we can create similar put it here now let's create a new type instead of a studio we're going to duplicate this and make it an lc one bed we can have the same type mark and also sometimes instead of that I'll just say one bed panel sometimes it's nice to have the actual unit type in this mark and that way I can make sure I have the right load center in the right room there we go one bed panel okay now we need to fix these loads. The only unit area happens to be the same. Let's say that a one bedroom though is around 500 square feet. So we can put that in as an instance variable. And then the type parameters or variables are for the one bed. And in here, our main difference is we have more heating and cooling, 3KW. The rest of this remains the same. So now I have a different connected load 19 around 19 kW so as you can see this varies from room to room but any other one bed bedroom that I put in I can just copy similar duplicate this one bed unit and all of the type parameters will be already set up for a one bedroom so all of those will be the same the only thing that will change maybe is the square footage slightly between other one bedrooms so how this works is we go ahead and connect this to, in this case, we have a meter center one. Simply connect it as meter center. And over here for the load name, I like to call it unit 215 studio. If I could spell studio, apply that. And then this one, simply connect it like, or, like any other load. This is just a more complex load. Power it to MC1. We'll call this unit 216 one bed. Apply that. So now we have these connected, and you can even home run these, which we typically do. It shows the installing electrician, which meter center we have this connected to because you get larger units and of course you have more than one meter center. I'm getting into the circuit data here so I can include my conduit, arc wire they call it. There, MC11, MC12. And then if we actually look at our MC1 panel schedule, switchboard schedule in this case, and sometimes I, I will rename this as meter center instead of switchboard but accomplishes the calculations so this one shows my two load centers connected it shows the connected load 
down here. And in this case, because I only have two, I'm at a full 100% demand factor. But if I was to add, let's just do it for demonstration purposes, create similar. This is, let's say this is actually another studio. So I'm duplicating my studio panel, which already has my type parameter set up. Putting a leader on this. So that is done. I just have to check my square footage. And in this case, I realize my square footage is the same as the other studio, so I'm good. But now, if I connect this to my meter center one as unit 217 studio, apply that and get the home run. Tag it without a leader. We will see an MC1. Now, it has automatically included the 45% demand factor of the connected load. So this does all your diversification, diversification for you. You don't need Excel spreadsheets, um, anything like that. And it's all accounted for here. And this, furthermore, goes upstream. If you look at our one simple one-line diagram we've started for this project, we have a meter center up here with our our load center would connect here and then we're connected through a few switch down to our main distribution board so we have an MDB let us see the MDB schedule there's our meter center MC1 with the connected load and down here under dwelling unit it put it separately as a load classification and includes the 45 percent if we had other meter centers connected here, it would add all those up and apply the appropriate demand factor for this bus, for this panel, and do all of your calculations for you.